Hey there and welcome to a new tutorial. Today we're going to make these Christmas ornaments here, so without any further ado, let's get straight into it. So the first thing that we're going to do is hit A and then X to delete everything. Next up what we're going to do is press Shift A, go to Mesh and then UV Sphere. That will give us a little sphere here which we're going to immediately distort by going to the modifiers, add modifier, then decimate, set it to unsubdivide and 1. You will see the topology gets messed up pretty quickly, but that uh, doesn't really matter so let's just apply it here and get into edit mode. Now let's set it to face selection mode up here and now what we can do is press C to get a circle selection, click here to select the inner faces here and then just press Ctrl and plus on the number pad. Next up what we're going to do is press P and then press selection. Now we have separated this mesh from the rest. You can pretty much delete the bottom half in, uh, in object mode again. So with that we're just left with this here. Next up what we're going to do is press Shift A and add in another sphere. And we can just give this a subdivision surface modifier here and that should make it smoother and let's shade it smooth with W and shade smooth. Next up what we're going to do is get this top thing here, get into edit mode, select everything by pressing A, press G to move it, Z to constrain it to the Z axis and move it up until it barely intersects. So next up what we're, uh, what we're going to do is just add another modifier, get a solidification modifier which is right here, solidify. And now we would just need to adjust the value until it does no longer have this gap on here. You can also leave it but it, I think it looks better when it just intersects a little bit. Next up I'm going to apply this as well and I'm going to press A and select the top faces again with the same method as before, just select the inner circle then Control plus. Now I'm going to press I twice and that will let me inset every single face by itself. Now that I have a slight inset in here, I'm just going to get a little bit closer, press Alt E and then extrude the faces along the normals. I'm going to extrude them upwards like so and you will see that will give us a nice flower pattern. Next up what I'm going to do is go to the modifiers again, create a bevel and set it to 4 segments. Now I can just press W and shade the smooth as well and you will see that we have some nice shading going on. Next up, we want this flower to be all over this sphere, so I'm just going to duplicate it by pressing Shift and D, right clicking to snap it back into place, R for rotation, X and then 180. That will place it down here. Now I'm just going to Shift click on this here so that it gets selected as well, and then just Shift J. That will join it into one mesh so that we can, oops, that we can move them as one unit. I'm just going to Shift D again to duplicate, R X 90, Shift D again, R Z 90, whoops, R Z 90. And now we have it on every side of this sphere. So what we can do is just select every single one of them and press Ctrl J again. Now we should have this all as one mesh, as you can see right here, and we should have this sphere again as one mesh. Uh, with the modeling we're almost done, next up what we're going to do is press Shift A again, add in a cylinder and I'm just going to delete the bottom cap because we're not going to see it anyways. Next up make it a bunch smaller, bring it up, uh, with 7 on the number pad I'm going to get into top orthographic view so I can scale it in until it meets the edge of these pointy things here. So next up I'm going to move it in, like so and I'm going to bevel it, something like this. I'm going to shade the smooth as well and I'm going to add in a torus, shift A, torus. I make it a bunch smaller, bring it up again and in front of the graphic view I'm just going to rotate it and scale it until it looks good. I'm thinking this here looks good and what I'm going to do now in edit mode I'm going to press Alt S to shrink in it 
or to make it thinner something like that and I'm going to move it up again and it should look like this shaded smooth as well and if you're making close-up uh, shots of this I would suggest that you give this a subdivision of one as well because it does get pretty choppy without so now that we have this we could theoretically hook something through here but I trust you to do uh, I trust you enough to do that on your own and now let's just select the hoop the thing here the knob and then this here and then the sphere we should select the sphere at last Control p and then object that will parent everything to the sphere and when we rotate it it should uh, every, everything should rotate and move accordingly with it now what we can do is press n and then over here in this tool in this tool panel we can just simply shrink this down until we get to point uh, 0.15 meters or so because that is roughly how big one of those ornaments is uh, the correct size does not matter you can place it like this or like this uh, it should just roughly line up with 15 centimeters I mean it depends uh, in the US there are like uh, balls that are 4 inches or 5 inches so you would have to see what is in your area how big they are so now that we basically did that we can just press shift a and add an a plane which is about the last step that we need for our modeling I'm just going to add in a camera like this alt g and alt r to reset the location and the rotation just going to move it up and back a bit and rotate it 90 degrees on the x-axis so i'm just going to move it a little bit more towards here and increase the focal length because that usually gives you a less distorted look you can see how the edges of the ball uh, actually get less distorted the further you zoom in which is really cool um, so let's move this a little bit more to the back and what we can do now is just left click on the center here and add in a plane axis what will that do i will show you in a bit let's just switch this here to cycles and then gpu rendering you can also render this in uh in eevee but it looks better in cycles uh, let's give this an hdri just going to take one that i found off the internet this is actually my favorite one and when we click render or to render view you will see that things look like this so uh, let's give this some depth of field so like this and let's choose the empty as our focus object so you can see that it focuses straight on like that i'm going to increase the focus or the f-stop to four which will give this a little bit more sharpness or a little bit of a uh, of a less shallow depth of field so next up what we're going to do is go to the uh, shading view or the shading tab and now what i'm going to do is give this here a basic material i'm going to give it a red color something like this doesn't have to be precise and bump up the metallic to one next up what we were going to need is uh, an add-on so let's go to edit preferences and under the add-ons look for node wrangler for me it's already enabled you just have to tick the box and you should be able to use it as well uh, next up let's get a shift a noise texture the normal one not the white noise and plug the factor into the metallic now that doesn't change much right off the bat but now since we're going to add a color ramp and put it in between we can shift control and click on it to see what it actually does it gives us this black and white value which we're going to adjust now first of all let's set the detail to the max so 15 and the roughness to the max as well so one what that gives us is this very noisy pattern here which we can adjust by moving the handles here just going to move it until we get some really dark spot not completely black but fairly dark and i'm going to move this here up as well so that should basically give us something that looks like this uh okay i actually plug this into the metallic i wanted to plug it into the roughness and the metallic to be one and now you can see the effect that it has on the ball 
I'm just going to quickly copy this by selecting it, Control C, and giving this a new material, plug and plugging it into the roughness as well. Just bump up the metallic value again, and you should be having something that looks like this. I'm just going to make it a little darker, something like that, because that usually looks a lot better. Let's give this here the same material, and this here as well. Great. Now, the last thing that we need to do is give this here material, I'm just going to use the standard principle PSDF with a black material, or a black base color, and we should be all set. Now if we render this, it's going to look actually pretty nice. So now we have this, we can just uh, select everything, press R to rotate, and see what looks the best. And... I think this here looks fairly nice from the lighting. Uh, so yeah, just going to make this here a little bit brighter because it's actually a little bit too dark. And um, yeah, let's decrease the roughness a little bit so that we can get a little bit of a reflection. And what we can do now is uh, select everything, so like this, and just duplicate it, shift D, and now we can move it somewhere like this. Okay, I messed it up. Uh, okay, I messed it up big time. Just give me a second. And you can see that uh, they also look pretty good individually, so uh, if you don't want the, uh, the flakes here, the stars, uh, you don't have to have them in your scene, but I think they add a bit of a nice touch. So the way I'm doing this is uh, after I duplicated it, I just pressed uh, G and then Shift Z, and that lets me move this along every axis but the Z axis. I'm just going to rotate this a little bit, something like this, and let's do the same thing again, like. So, now just rotate this here again, and that should be looking nice. So, uh, you can actually uh, change the colors of the of the balls uh, behind here as well, or make them plastic. I'm going to show you some examples here. Uh, but basically the way you do this is you just select the ball, uh, click on this little uh, icon that says 5, and then you can just go ahead and change this to whatever you like. I'm going to choose like a more cyan or turquoise color for this one. I do the same thing over here and make it just greenish, something like that. Looks pretty good, uh, but I actually preferred the red one. So yeah, I hope you liked this and I hope you found this useful. And um, yeah, I hope to see you in the next one.